Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Shot Science Overtime number 64. It's at a special date and time. Uh, I'm Casey. This is Coach Tom. We are Shot Science Basketball. And today we have a very special topic that we want to talk to you guys about because it's it's something that's been uh, kind of buzzing in the news lately. But that's the race for MVP in the NBA. And, uh, you know, there's two front runners that are kind of being tossed around. And uh, so we're going to discuss that. But... We have a special guest with us, with, us, with us here this afternoon, and that is one of our good friends, Rachel Demita. And uh, you might have recognized her from uh, our slow motion video that we did a few months back, and uh, some more stuff that's going to be coming up. So I want to introduce Rachel, and uh, Rachel, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and some places where people can find you. Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for watching that slow motion video, if you did. Casey and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, but yeah, I'm from Akron, Ohio, from those of you who don't know. So obviously, I'm going to be talking a little bit about LeBron today. And um, I've been watching him play since he was 14 years old. So it's a little special part in my heart. Um, I was a basketball player growing up. I got a full ride to Old Dominion University in 2008. And now I'm creating YouTube videos, and I have a new show coming up soon with The Whistle. Um, you guys can follow me on all my social media at R-A-D-E-M-I-T-A, that's R-A-D-E-M-I-T-A, and if you guys have any questions throughout, you can comment here, or you can also tweet at me, or at Shot Science. But let's get started on this. Let's right talk, on. Let's talk MVP. Yeah, and I'll put, uh, I'll put Rachel's links down in the description of the video, too, and they might actually already be down there. Um, if I did everything right. Uh, but uh, definitely tweet at Rachel or R.A. Demita and uh, at Shot Science is Us, and we'd love to hear from you guys on Twitter, or you can just leave them in the chat. Um, but today's topic is the NBA MVP race, and the two front runners, we'll just throw it out there, are going to be Kevin Durant and LeBron James, right? Yes, <laughs> of course. Um, and, you know... <laughs> LeBron's probably in the running every single year. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, he uh, he's he's pretty much going to be the, at the top of the list no matter what just because he is the best player in basketball right now. Um, but us over here, and I think Rachel probably a little bit too, will concede that Kevin Durant is having the best season. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, Kevin Durant is having a killer season, and being... A say, huge say LeBron James yeah. fan. Um, I do think he's going to take the MVP this year. But, I don't know. And, and Casey, I, I guess I can let you start with why you think Kevin Durant should have the MVP title. Sure. Well, okay. The thing is, is that Kevin Durant, he has the numbers, right? He has more wins. He has better numbers. He's playing with historic consistency. Uh, you know, he's showing crazy leadership for his team. He's basically been carrying those guys on his back the entire year. Uh, you know, Westbrook was out for a huge chunk of it. And, uh, you know, he was Kevin Durant was playing on a level that nobody in the, in the league was playing otherwise. I mean, he was scoring like 40-point games almost every game. And, uh, you know, when you're that prolific and pro proficient, uh, I, I think that you have to be – the top guy, right? Well, especially when you look at his points per game, it's 32 points a game average, and he's had a couple of those games that were like 40, 45 points yeah. a game. Yeah. So that's pretty outstanding when you stop to think about it. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, we talk about numbers too. I mean, he's he's getting over seven, uh, seven rebounds a game, over five assists a game. Um, I think I saw a stat somewhere where he had over 100 more assists than anybody else on his team. And he's the he's the leading scorer on his team by a huge margin, uh, you know. I mean, that's just uh, that's tough numbers to beat. So, uh, what do you think about LeBron? That's you know, and I'm feeling sorry for you right now. <laughs> well, I'll say I'll say that everything you're saying is 100 percent true, and I will say that I am a Kevin Durant fan as well. I do support him, but I am a LeBron James fan first, and I think that he is still king of the NBA. So my problem with all of this Kevin Durant talk, I totally agree. He's having a killer season, but my problem with it is the analysts 
and the fans and everybody in the media and shot science. jumping to conclusions comparing Kevin Durant to Michael Jordan talking about this tw this this game streak with 25 points or more a game like where did that come from has anybody ever heard of that record before this year like why 25 points a game what <laughs> that's one of those deep stats things but I think it, yeah, it's but it was such a big deal, and yeah, he's having an incredible season. The numbers there, he, there's no doubt that he is an incredible scoring machine, and he's been incredi incredibly consistent, but I think that everybody needs to just chill out. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's the bottom line, because LeBron James, although everybody's saying he's having an off season, I don't think that he is. If you look at his numbers... He's having he's still averaging 27 points per game, over six and a half assists per game, which is more than Kevin Durant. I'm not, you know, uh, yeah, around yeah. seven rebounds. So it's not it's not too much less. But what really stands out in my mind is he's number four in field goal percentage, shooting 56.7 percent field goals and only taking 1,353 shots as opposed to Kevin Durant's six, 1,688 shot attempts. Okay, so, so so you're thinking that he's he's more efficient then? Well, I think I, I think overall, yeah, he's more efficient. I, and if it was if it was my choice, I wouldn't give LeBron James MVP this, this year, even though I would love to, but the it, MVP is a lot about the numbers and Kevin Durant has also shown I mean OKC has more wins than the Heat this season as well. So I don't want to take that away from Kevin Durant. But you need to look at LeBron with a little more fairness, if, if that makes sense. Because um, he's still had a great season. He He's on a winning team. He has two titles from the past two seasons. So we can't just jump to this like, oh, Kevin Durant's the new MJ. Like, you know, we're going to be jumping ships every other month if you do that, you know. Okay, so let me. I'll ask you, and I'll ask my dad. Do you okay. think that a the, a player's past seasons or or past performances count in an MVP race for this season? What do you think? Me first. Yeah. No, I don't think they are. Okay, I agree with you, so, on that, Rachel. It should be a year by year thing. Uh, Totally. Otherwise, they wouldn't offer that as a yearly thing. So I, I agree with you on that one, Rachel. Okay. Exactly. So that's why I feel like Kevin Durant sh should have the MVP this season. But I think all of the talks about, I think people are jumping shit, you know, <laughs> talking about all of this greatness and, you know, give him a little time. Like, if he wins a championship this season, then maybe we can – talk a little more. Yeah, so I mean you're not a fan of the hype then. Yeah, so much hype. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, those two players are so different in the game that they play. You know, you were talking about how uh, LeBron's percentages, uh, shooting percentages are like, what, I think you said 59%. Does that sound right, it's Rachel? Like 56.7%. 56. And the one thing that is such an important part of his power game is that he takes the ball to the basket. And um, uh, Durant doesn't do that quite as much, even though he's very capable. But if you're, what, 6'9 and 265 pounds or whatever he's it is. He's like 6'11. He's not 6'9. No, I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about uh, LeBron. Oh, LeBron's like 6'8, yeah. Yeah, and he's he's just such a huge body. He's able to, and athletic, and he can get to the basket. Whereas the other guy doesn't have that uh, bulk and, and overall strength. And so he relies on that outside shot. And, you know... Um, his his three point shooting wasn't great. It was pretty good, but wasn't great. I think it was like thirty nine or forty percent. Durant. I'm talking about Durant. Yeah. Um, and you know that's probably really pretty high up, but not the best in the NBA. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I think that it's tough to compare both these guys because really because because of those reasons. Uh, you know, LeBron is going to have a higher percentage from the field simply because of the shots that he takes. And, uh, you know, he's, he's more of a slasher, a driver. Uh, you know, he posts up a lot more than Kevin Durant does. And Kevin Durant is definitely going to be taking more shots from the perimeter. Um, and it, it probably will be a volume situation, too, yeah. for Kevin mm -hmm. Durant, yeah. where he's going to get more attempts. 
Um, and, you know, I, I would have to say that, uh, well, here's, here's another thing. Let's consider the fact that Kevin Durant is playing in the Western Conference. LeBron James is playing in the Eastern Conference. Do you think that makes any difference? Especially this year. <laughs> well, I also have the amount of games that they played compared to the amount of minutes that they played as well. And LeBron has played 77 games this season, 2,903 minutes. And Katie has played 81 games, 3,118 minutes. So he's definitely played more. And I don't know if you guys even remember, it was a few months back when KD was having this streak and, and scoring 40 points a game and whatnot, and LeBron was interviewed and he said, you know, I'm kind of jealous that KD has the ability or has the will to take so many shots because he really was taking a lot of shots, and this is when Westbrook was out as well. Um, so I think that does have a lot to do with it, and I think, you know, MVP race obviously doesn't have to do with seasons past, but you have to look at it the LeBron is coming off of two championship seasons, and there is a lot of wear and tear. There is a lot of stress. There's a target on your back. You know, there's the motivation factor. There is, you know, playing teams in the East that the East isn't so strong this season, but then you see that the Heat got swept by the Nets, so there's all these factors. And then, But there's also factors with Kevin Durant, too. He's, like, losing Westbrook every other month. But I have a question for you guys, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do right. you think for individual greatness, and I was listening to NBA radio not too long ago on this subject, for individual greatness, do you think that MVPs are more important or titles? Oh, I mean, that's easy. Yeah, yeah, truly. Uh, you know, I think there's an awful lot, and personally, I think there's way too much uh, emphasis put on titles. There's so many things that really affect that. For example, last year, uh, if you take a look at Oklahoma, they probably would have been maybe in that uh, mix right at the end and maybe would have beaten the, uh, the Heat for the title. Uh, and so that was last year that was affected by Westbrook's injury and whatnot. And so I, I think that... But, that... but do you think that what is more important for a person to win, a title or an MVP? A title. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about is winning. Uh, and and the games you put put together, I, I I don't think the individual titles count uh, if you're not winning, and uh, you know it's a great accolade to have on on your resume. Yep. But uh, you know the the name of the game is winning. <laughs> right. Sure. How about you? Yeah, I feel the same way, and I feel like if you have obviously MVP attributes to it, and you'll be remembered for that, but you won't be remembered as great as if you if you have titles and I feel like that's what Carmelo is lacking right now he has the scoring title and he's, he's had the scoring title in the past and I think he's like second or third this season and his team didn't even make the playoffs so I feel like it's also about building up the players that you have around you and making them better while you're on the court. So I definitely agree that it was titles, but I remember listening to this whole thing on NBA radio. They were having like, it was like a two hour long debate about which meant more. But I think that if Kevin Durant gets a title in the next couple years or so, then there's going to be more discussion. You know, is, is he really great? Can he hold his own up there with the greats like MJ and like with Will and, you know, list goes on and on, and LeBron. You're right. It, it's kind of amazing that both those guys haven't really been in the league that many years. I think... Uh, LeBron's been around for like 10 or 11, I, I think. I don't, has it been that long? Yeah, I, like I 2003, would... 2004, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I and, think it's 11 think... for him, and it's 7 for Kevin Durant, I believe. Right. Yeah, yeah. so they haven't been there that long. Uh, you know, um, I, I did run across a, a quote the other day uh, where LeBron said that he thought that probably Durant should win, and the reason was based upon the fact that he played much more consistently uh, during the course of the year. So I guess, Rachel, it's already written in stone when he's conceding it already. What do you think? And I respect LeBron for saying that because I think that, that he recognizes it as well. Like the number, As far as MVP goes, the numbers don't lie in this matter, and Kevin Durant had a killer season, and LeBron went for 61, 
and then for the next two weeks didn't play very well for, for LeBron standards, you know, and so, I mean, the, the minute LeBron hit that 61 points, everybody's like, oh, LeBron for MVP, and that almost made me mad, too, because I'm like, guys, KD's still playing well. LeBron had one great game, but, you know, that's the media's job is to, to hype up every game. <laughs> like, it's make or break. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, I think you said one really important thing was, uh, you know, that, you know, those great players really kind of build up their teammates around them. And, uh, you know, I think LeBron James and Kevin Durant do that, and that's yeah. evidenced by the fact that they're leading their, their team in points and, and uh, you know, uh, offensive opportunities, but they're also, you know, dishing out assists and getting rebounds. Um, and, you know, LeBron James is, is widely thought of to kind of be, kind of the second coming of Magic Johnson and stuff. So, uh, you know, th they're definitely not kind of Carmelo-type players where, uh, you know, he gets himself in trouble because he is kind of a, a black hole when it comes to, you know, catching the ball. He's going to be putting it up. Yeah. Um, Incredible so, yeah. score. Um, Can I, I'll say yep. one thing as well yeah. because I've been, watching, I've been watching LeBron play since he was in high school, and... It's funny because when he was in high school, he was still on such a high level. Like, you could just tell this, this kid is going to be amazing. And I just remember him, like, almost hitting his teammates in the face with the ball when he'd be throwing, like, a no-look pass. You know, he'd drive down to the lane and then dish cross-court to the backside, and, and sometimes they wouldn't be ready for it. But he's been playing that kind of a game since he was really young and it's, it's kind of cool for me to be able to see it when he was that young and see his game obviously he's much bigger and stronger and his skills have evolved but he's always been you know almost like a pass first score second type of player yeah and it helps that you have the body of, of a NFL player too yeah, really <laughs> <laughs> of a but, tank yeah. yeah yeah so I mean bottom line one is that I think all of us can can concede that Kevin Durant probably deserves it this year, even though uh, LeBron James could is always probably going to be considered the best in the game right now. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. As Rachel? he deserves. Do we agree that he deserves that? Who does? Do Do KD? you guys agree that LeBron James deserves to still hold the crown as the best player in the league? Oh yeah, but yeah. not not MVP for this season. Yeah, this season. Right. There. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, do you have any honorable mentions or any people that you think uh, <laughs> that are maybe third through fifth in this in this kind of a race? If you would have asked me that at the beginning of the season, I think it's kind of funny that you know the beginning of the season we were excited for Kobe, we were excited for Derrick Rose, we were excited for Paul George. First of all, what has happened with the Pacers is what I want to know. And Paul George, Paul George was one of my favorites. I was like, this guy's smooth. His game can really evolve. He's been working hard. Um, then Chris Paul. Chris Paul's playing great, but I think that he just gets overlooked sometimes. My honorable mentions? Yeah. Do you want to hear ours? I want to hear yours first, then I'll, I'll bank okay. off of them. Yeah, so I mean, Chris Paul, uh, you know, he's having a really good season. I think uh, Blake Griffin is doing really well. Um, Joakim Noah, uh, he's he's kind of at the top of the list. Um, and, uh, you know, Paul George, until he fell apart, uh, you know, he's not playing so well anymore. I, but that, that's kind of like a Pacers wide thing. And, you know, maybe it's because they traded our, our buddy Orlando Johnson, <laughs> who's, uh, you know, he's, he's a guy that my dad coached when uh, when he was in high school. But they shouldn't have traded Orlando. Yeah, truly. They, they'd still be playing great. <laughs> um, as soon as he left, they went downhill. Yeah. Him. Um, but, you know, I think kind of for me, kind of the top guys would be kind of, uh, you know, Stephen Curry, just because he kind of completely changes the offensive landscape for the Golden State. Um, and Goran Dragic, you know, if, uh, the dark horse guy down there for playing for the Suns. I mean, he's doing a lot of stuff down there that, uh, you know, in a tough Western Conference. So uh, those are kind of the ones that I thought of. Yeah, I would yeah agree and, those and he just came out of nowhere. Yeah. But he's another one of those guys that can score and, and distribute the ball, and his defense isn't terrible. And 
So yeah. Cool. I agree wanna, with you, you. I agree with you on Steph. I love Joakim Noah's game. I don't think it's a type of game that he should be considered for MVP. I think that Blake Griffin. I wouldn't put it, him as MVP, but he. I've seen such a leap from his game from last year, and even the maturity. And I and I know that he's you know he, he just got his last technical, so he couldn't play in the last game. But I think that his game has evolved, and you've seen some post moves from him that you really didn't see last season. Kevin Love had not a great season. Right. Team was didn't do that well, but you know he had a standout season. And Carmelo Anthony. Had I actually earned more respect for Carmelo this season because I'm not a Carmelo Anthony fan, but the the Knicks situation was just horrific this year, and for him to really go out every night and it seemed like he was playing harder than I had even seen him play when the team was better, and still putting up those numbers and doing it consistently, I earned a little bit more respect for him as well. Yeah, cool. I think uh, that's all reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I think uh, let's take a few comments and questions and stuff, and then uh, we'll wrap it cool. up. Cool. cool. Okay, uh, I'm just going to go into the chat right here. Um, this is from Claudio Monteverdi, who says, uh, LeBron is better than Durant, but this was Durant's season. Hashtag MVP. Okay. Uh, this one is from I'm... Tacent, who says, I'm a huge LeBron fan, but Durant absolutely killed it this year. He deserves the MP MVP award. I think that's my exact feelings on it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, let's see. There, here's a guy named Joshua O'Connor says, go LeBron. Um, then there's somebody here that says, Opar the Great, who says, basketball is a team sport with too many solo awards. <laughs> Okay, and here's here's one of the last ones we're going to do. This is uh, from Chris Bulls. He says, LeBron is the most complete player, and I have a feeling that he isn't even trying. I feel like if he wanted to, he could put up 40-plus a game. What do you think about that one? I don't think that he's necessarily not trying. I think that in LeBron's mind, and, and again, I don't know. I'm not in LeBron's mind, but I think that he would rather have a title than an MVP. So if that means resting a game or if that means, you know, sitting out the fourth quarter if they're up, you know, not not just getting numbers to get numbers. If you look at the minutes played between KD and LeBron, like like I said earlier, KD has played 3,118 minutes and LeBron has played 2,900 minutes. So that's a pretty big difference. And I think that this, this person may be – whoever commented, thank you for the comment, guys, may have a little bit of truth to that, but I don't believe he's not trying. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. And, you know, <laughs> I'm looking through some of the comments here, and it looks like most people are saying that KD should win it, um, but LeBron is is still, you know, one of the best, if, you know, if not the best right now. So that's kind of the consensus. Um, so I think that we can all agree on that, and uh, I just want to know who you think – is going to win it all. What do you think? I was asked this earlier today, and I'm, I'm really struggling with it because, you know, you go back to the... I, I think that the Spurs could win the West if they... They just, they, they just know how to win. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. You know, their players are playing the least amount of minutes. I mean, Coach Pop is obviously great because he knows what he's doing. They just know how to win, and I feel like they have a vengeance coming back on the Heat because of Game 6 last year. But then again, I feel like LeBron may have even more of a fire lit because of all this KD talk, you know? he may And he wants that third ring more than anything, and I think those guys do. There may have been some fatigue during the regular season, but I think... I'm not a Miami Heat fan, and this is so out of character for me to say, but I think that I want the Heat to win this season <laughs> only because I want LeBron James to have his crown back as king, and I think that that would solidify it and people would calm down and just realize that LeBron is still the greatest. 
Okay, in, in your one your one word answer, uh, what does your head want and what does your heart want? Is it the same thing? Or what does your head say and what does your heart want? My my head wants the Clippers to win. My heart wants LeBron to win by himself. <laughs> Hard to say, isn't it, Rachel? <laughs> so hard. <laughs> I can't even my say. My head it. says. My head says. Yeah, my <laughs> head. My head says probably the the Spurs, maybe OKC, but my heart says I want the the Warriors to win because we're Bay Area guys. Yeah. What do you say? Uh, well, I feel the well, same that's way. Not happening. Being a Bay Area fan and watching those guys play, uh, they're fun to watch and uh, uh, just that they're really. I think they play much more of a team game, even though. Um, um, what's uh, what's the shooter? Huh? Um, Steph Curry? Uh, Curry, yeah. I, I was stuck on his brother's name. I think he is such a scoring threat, but they play so well as a team. I think that they that would be fun to see them win it. That would be really good. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, obviously, that's that's a heart play. It's yeah. not it's not necessarily what we think is going to yeah. happen. I think. So did you figure it out or no? What I think is going to happen. Yeah, what does your heart say and what does your head say? Okay, so my head, I guess if I'm really, really thinking the Spurs. Okay. And my heart is still saying LeBron. <laughs> oh, LeBron, it's his own team now, too. <laughs> nice. Okay. But guys, your Warriors have to go through LAC first round, which I think is going to be a really, really fun series. Yeah, that's that's gonna be an awesome one for sure. Yeah, it's, cool. it's, gonna, it's gonna be really be fun because they don't like each other. A bunch of long bombs, a bunch of lobs, maybe some fights. Yeah. Maybe yeah, some sure. fights, but Bogut isn't playing, so I don't know if there'll be as many fights. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, there's, there's some scrappy guys on the Warriors. <laughs> Okay, well let's uh, let's wrap it up and uh, make sure that we send everybody that's watching over to check out Rachel's stuff. Um, I want to thank Rachel for being here. I think that was a cool discussion on the MVP MVP race. Um, so Rachel, where can people find you on the internet? You guys can find me anywhere on the internet as far as social media goes by using R A Demita. So Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, it's R A D E M I T A. And I have my own YouTube channel. I do interviews over there. You can check them out. I'm always tweeting about basketball on my Twitter and then you can just like follow my photos about life on Instagram. Yeah. And you can yeah. check me out on Shot Science too. My my slow motion video with Shot Science. That was really fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want, I want to make sure that people check that out too, because that was that's super cool. Yeah. Um, we slowed down uh, Rachel's shooting to a thousand frames per second. So what takes normally about two to three seconds to do is slowed down to almost two or three minutes, um, and it's it's just it's it's awesome. You can see every little tiny you know aspect of of her shot, and uh, you know there's going to be more from Rachel too. Um, and also, uh, I just want people to know that Rachel has a background in basketball. She's a former college player. She knows what she's talking about. So uh, mm -hmm. make sure you check out her stuff, and if you have questions about basketball things, make sure you tweet at her, and I'm sure she will tweet back to you, okay? Um, thank you guys for showing up. This was awesome, and if you like this kind of stuff where we discuss uh, kind of current events, uh, let us know, and we'll do more of them, and we'll try to bring Rachel back on for it. Uh, if you want to follow us, we are at Shot Science on pretty much everything, and we will get back to you if you write us a question or want to know something. Um, but Thank you again, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you guys Thanks next time. Thanks for having time. me, guys. Of course. You bet, you bet. All right, you guys. See you later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>